Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I am a mama of two little ones. Matthew is a little over two and Kennedy is about eight weeks old. And I am just bringing you a video today sharing some of the breastfeeding must-haves I feel like you need right whenever you get started right after having baby. Let me just start by saying I am not a board certified lactational consultant. I am just a mom just sharing what works for me and the things that I have learned from watching other lactational consultants. One of the first things that I would say you should do is check and see what classes you can take, whether that be I like your hospital or um, Aeroflow is where I took a lot of classes, which is just online. They are a company that su um, supplies breast pumps. I think they do them for free depending on your insurance. And so whether you have one that's gonna like plug into the wall or whether it's portable or wearable or whatever, um, just make sure you have a really good pump. That's that's one thing. Um, the other thing is just take all the classes that you can, uh, whether you have to pay for them or specifically like look for the free ones. Um, all of the ones that I took were all free. I think there was only one that I was like, eh, this one's kind of a waste of time. But the rest of them were all great, whether they were teaching me something brand new or just kind of refresh of like, oh yeah, I think need to remember that whenever this comes around because I had the experience last time. Just educate yourself as much as you can. Take notes, that way you can look back on them and all that kind of stuff. If you are a first time mom and you are gearing up and like about to go into labor and kind of not knowing what to expect, there are usually lactational consultants that will come in and talk to you at the hospital. I got very nervous. Um, I felt like there was a lot of pressure from the different ones that I saw whenever I had Matthew and I just kind of got overwhelmed with it and froze up and I just didn't want to keep them in the room with me. But the one that I had when I had Kennedy was amazing. She was just very like calm and chill and I just felt really comfortable like asking her questions and making sure that I was like holding, you know, things right and whatnot. So just make sure if you don't like the one that comes into your hospital room, ask for a different one. There is definitely more than just one on staff. Okay, so one of the first things that I would say is to be cautious when using one of these. This is the Hakka brand like milk collector. I don't know what its official name is, but when you hear Hakka, like this is usually what you might think of. This is great and I use this a lot with Matthew. The only problem is that I didn't realize that this is actually a manual pump. And so when I would feed Matthew, say I'm feeding him from my left side, I would hook this up to my right to collect milk that I was like letting down, but I was also actually telling my body that I was having two babies feeding. So I was creating an oversupply, if you will. Definitely just watch and be a little mindful of how you use this thing. Um, but this is nice. You can squeeze, you like fold the top down. If I can get it to, this is brand new. I've never even used it, but you fold this down at the top like that and then squeeze at the bottom and then just suction it to your boob, let that go and then let it go. And it'll actually stay in and then just pull milk out as it's, as you're feeding your baby. What I do recommend though is the Hakka ladybug and I'll try and show that to you, but it just looks like a little ladybug. It's got a hole at the back. And so what I do with this is I just, when I'm looking at it from the back, I squeeze the sides and squeeze in from the back and then just stick the nibble right in the middle and then I just let go. Uh, depending on how like much of a suction you've got on it, it'll kind of leave a little bit of an indention. It's not gonna create enough of a suction to like warrant a manual pump. It is just going to collect like your letdown. So this one I think is like a one or maybe two ounces um, and that's it. So there there is a bigger one. I think there was like a three or four ounce one, um, but I just got the, the small like one to two ounce one. Uh, but like I said, this one just collects your letdown. I have gotten so much milk just from this alone before I even started pumping. So this is really nice because I just can't stand the thought of not using anything and just knowing like that I'm losing an ounce or so every time I feed is just kind of crazy. So um, I would definitely recommend something like this. The other thing I would definitely recommend is just some sunflower lecithin, I think is how you say it. But this is the one I get off of Amazon. I found this out from one of the, I think her name is Milky Mama on Instagram. She recommended this. And this just, from how I understand it, it just helps your milk kind of, I don't wanna say thin out in like a bad way, but it just helps it like be less sticky, if you will. So I just do like one a day. I think the recommended like 
maintenance mode is like twice a day. And then if you get a clogged duct, you would do it like three or four times a day. I had, if you have not seen any of my breastfeeding videos with Matthew, I got clogged ducts and mastitis a lot. I had mastitis three times with him and once I ended up in the hospital. So this was on immediate order as soon as I was getting close to my delivery date so that I had that in the house ready to go once we got home. Another thing I would recommend, I mentioned this in my birth video last time, but this is just Kennedy's little book. It's kind of upside down, but it's just, it says planning for joy. And I kind of mentioned how it has all kinds of tracking things in it, but this one is where you track like your feedings and stuff. So I'll just hold this up. So this is all of like her feedings and then like diaper changes and stuff. And then there's another one for sleep over here. I never tracked her sleep or anything. And I probably only did this for maybe like a week and a half, if that. It just tracks like the time that you started, uh, whether you were doing breast or, breast or bottle, how many ounces if you did a bottle, uh, which side you started and ended on, um, how long you went for and any notes you wanted to take. And then same thing with diaper changes, whether it was pee or poop, what time, um, then like any notes that you wanted to add. I liked this, this was really helpful. This was one way that I could track like which side I started with. The other thing that I started doing at one point was wearing like a little headband on the side that I needed to start with for the next time. So the way I do it is like, say I'm feeding her at one and I start with my right side and end on the left. The next time she eats around like four, I will start with my left and end on the right and vice versa. So however you want to track and keep track of that, just make sure you are alternating which side that you start on each time. Um, because if you were to always start like on your left, I think you would end up creating like a dominant boob and a slacker boob. So just kind of be mindful of that. One of the other things that I really like is just having easy like nursing tops. These little tank tops are great for whenever I'm just like at home. They're really easy to unclip and clip back. I have a bunch of these in a different bunch of different colors. I like the black ones just because if I do happen to leak and I don't have anything on, nobody's really gonna see it and we can tell. Uh, but I just, I have a lot of these and this is just very, very convenient. I took these, two of these to the hospital with us and this is what I wore on our way home. So nothing crazy, fancy, anything like that. Some of the things, other things that I would recommend is having some of the like disposable breast pads for like in a pinch. I keep some of these in her diaper bag just in case I don't have the ladybug and I'm wearing something and I'm like, oh, I could possibly leak. I'll stick one of these on and just that way I'm a little bit safe and I'm not gonna have, you know, giant like spots on my boobs. The other thing that I have is a bunch of these that we can just wash that are just reusable. I have a bunch of these, different kinds. Some of them are like a little more padded. These are a little thinner. So these are actually the ones that I like the most. Yeah, I just have both different kinds for whichever occasion I need them. The other thing I would totally recommend is nipple cream. This is the only one that I can find right now. This is the Lansano kind and I like this one. I also have the Earth Mama nipple butter somewhere around here and I cannot find it. I have no idea where it went. So Matthew may have found it and hid it somewhere. <laughs> so I'll try and find that. But uh, I liked both of them for different, different reasons um, and different like situations that I was in. I took these to the hospital and even though I wasn't like super in pain yet, I started using these as soon as we started breastfeeding, just that way I was starting the process of like taking care of my of my nipples and whatnot because they will get tender, they will get cracked, they will like hurt and all of those things. That's just part of the process. The other thing that I would recommend is these little silverettes. So these are usually, I, I don't know that they come in singles. I'm pretty sure they only come in pairs, but these are just, little thin silverettes. So you just stick these right over your nipple and they have like the silver in them is what brings the healing. So you do not use creams with these. Uh, so just make sure you are mindful of that. Um, these are expensive. I think these were 60 bucks on Amazon, but I cannot recommend these enough. If you are going to breastfeed, I would highly, highly recommend these. I use these a lot with Kennedy in the beginning because the creams just like weren't quite healing enough. And I didn't have as much of the like cracks and stuff. I did like in the first week, I noticed that I had, I can't remember which side, but one side was like definitely like bleeding a little bit and whatnot. I was like, oh, this is a little painful. And so I got these out and it healed up way faster than what it would have with the creams. Something else I would recommend just I don't know if I would recommend having it on hand. I need it on hand. 
Uh, my friend gave me these and it was really great whenever I was going through all of my like clogged ducts and stuff, but this is something that I have to be really careful with. So this is called Cabo Cream and I believe she got this on Amazon. Uh, I have another one that's like full because this one is like almost out, but it's definitely like has cabbage in it, which can promote you to dry up your supply. So you, that's where I say you have to be careful. Um, but this also can be used if you have clogged ducts. So I have some of this on hand just in case we run into that problem again this time. And then something else I would recommend is just having like a little massager. So this one I got for like this time with Kennedy, I did not have this with Matthew. So whenever I would need to like try and get a clogged duct out with Matthew, I we have one of the like giant like massagers for like your muscles and stuff. And I would use that. That was probably overkill, but it was the only thing that I had that would like get in and like work more than just like my hands could. Um, but this is nice. I have already used this because I did have a situation towards the beginning where I felt like I had more milk than what she was able to take because she was just so little. Um, so I did use this a couple times and this is just nice cause it's, I think you can use like the bigger, thicker round part, but then you can also use the like little tip part if you just have like a specific area that you need to work on. So this was nice. And the other thing I would say is make sure you have, I have a boppy pillow. There's also the, my breast friend, I think I used that whenever I was talking with the lactational consultant one time and I didn't mind it. Um, I just already had a boppy and so I wasn't going to buy something else. I was actually handed one down as well. So I have two, I have one that stays in the living room with me and then one that is in Kennedy's room that just stays in there for our nighttime nurse sessions and stuff. Uh, but I definitely recommend something. So you don't necessarily have to have one that's gonna like wrap around you or whatnot, but you can use just your pillow off of your bed or and if you have an extra one of those, it works just fine. Just something to like prop your elbow up so you're not like straining and like st uh, tensing up like all your muscles. Cause I can definitely tell when I have been doing so, like my back muscles will just be really tight by the end of the day and stuff. So just something to like relax. Something I still do, and I was told this by my a lactational consultant last time, is just relax and keep your shoulders down. So I have a tendency to like, whenever I'm getting them situated, I'll like start creeping my shoulders up and then that's where I like stay. And I just have to make sure I remember to like keep my shoulders down. So I will constantly like tell myself that whenever I'm feeding them. The other like two things that I would say is make sure related to your pump, make sure that you have the right flange size. I cannot recommend this enough because this is one of the biggest things that caused me to have mastitis so bad at the beginning with Matthew is as I was saying, so make sure you have the right flange size. That caused me to not be able to empty my breast like I needed to because I had the flanges that just come with your um, breast pump, which are way too big and found out in some of these classes that the industry measures those based on, I think, a cow or an animal. And so it's not even like based on a human, which is ridiculous to me. It's something that definitely needs to change though. For reference, I use a 19 instead of the 28 that it comes with. So just uh, make sure that you get some kind of ruler or there's all kinds of things you can use. You can buy something on Amazon to measure. You can use like a little, just a measuring tape and then do the calculation for it. Whatever you wanna do, just make sure you check your nipples. Um, you can do it. I think they recommend doing it before, like right at you, as, right after you give birth and then two weeks after because then your nipples are kind of like regulated a little bit or they're not quite as like swollen. I definitely did that just to make sure that nothing changed from Matthew to Kennedy. And luckily for me, like my flange size has stayed the same. So definitely make sure you check that out. Along that line though, ladies, if you are not familiar and don't check your boobs regularly, make sure that that is something that is in your uh, routine daily going forward if you choose to breastfeed. Uh, I did not do this and learned my lesson the hard way. So like every morning now when I get in the shower, I'm constantly like just checking, making sure that I don't feel any lumps uh, so that I don't get a clogged duct. And if I do, I am immediately starting the, my like remedy of all the things that I would do to like make sure that, that happens or to get it unclogged. Um, so just make sure that you're like constant, like way back. We're not just talking like right here at the beginning or at the front. You need to like check all the way back because believe it or not, like your milk ducts go like all the way back, just all the way underneath, all the way around. Get very, very familiar with 
with your ladies. All that to say, those are some of my top tips for if you are a new mom, first time mom, second time mom, and you are getting ready to have a baby and you are choosing to go down the breastfeeding route, these are just some of my top tips and some of the things that I made sure were like in place or ready to go once I got home with Kennedy and we started our breastfeeding journey. It has been so much easier this time than it was with Matthew. One, because I've learned a lot and taking those classes definitely helped and just educate yourself. That way you may know of certain situations or you have somebody on, on reference that you can call or whatnot. I just wanted to share all of those tips and hope that that helps you. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, click that little subscribe button. If you have extra questions that maybe I can help with and see if I've experienced it, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, if I can, if you have any prayer requests, leave those down below as well. Other than that, I will talk to you guys soon. Take care and God bless.